Hey, what's going on friends and family? My name is Skylint, and so often I get told in the comments, Yo Sky, seriously, you do these MMO lists all the time, it's always the same game, and that's not really true, and even if it was the same game, it's always a different topic, I always do say different things about the games, but regardless, I think a lot of you guys are really hungry to find out what, what are the new MMOs that you haven't heard of. That's literally gonna be this top 10. I picked 10 games that I'm considering the new underdog MMOs that we should be rooting for. Now I'm being pretty strict. If a game isn't on this list, I think that it's either not an underdog, like a lot of people really do talk about it, or it's really not worth rooting for. These are the 10 that we know of so far, yeah. Yeah, I know 2020 was kind of a slow year, but this upcoming release schedule is looking pretty good. I think next year might be a lot of fun for the massively multiplayer gamers out there. So if you would peel some eyeballs on the Patreon so that I can buy into these games, play them and review them, and thanks so much for liking and subscribing. If you want to check out more new games, I'm always trying to do that. But for this list, here we go. Let's keep the hype alive. Top 10 upcoming new underdog MMO. Alright guys, number 10 coming in here. The first that I want to talk about is Titan Reach. Titan Reach, basically, it self-proclaims itself, I think, pretty accurately. It's a modern take on old school RuneScape. Now they say MMORPGs, I definitely get that vibe, but it's very RuneScape. I think most people who are interested in a RuneScape-like game have been very disappointed over the past years. Really, RuneScape is RuneScape and there has been nothing else that has quite scratched that itch. Maybe some game has some slight mechanic, but to really live and play in RuneScape, you only have RuneScape, there, there's no other game, but Titan Reach might be that. However, it's really very much an underdog game because it didn't even reach its Kickstarter goal. Now, it got some money, I think pretty decent, especially for a game that kind of looks and feels the way it does. I'm pretty sure RuneScape actually was originally created with much less in mind, um, but it did reach 135,000 on Kickstarter, but it it wanted it wanted 400,000 and it, it didn't quite make it. However, it's, it's a little bit lower on the list because Lazy Peon did cover it and there are people who actually do know of this game, um, people are really excited about it, and I do think the market is hungry for a RuneScape-like game, but it, it's gotta be inspired, and it has to definitely add to the gameplay, versus more or less kind of foundationally being uh, copy-paste. Now, Titan's Reach, is it copy-paste or not? There was actually a, a way to play it, and there still might be, but um, I haven't played it myself, actually, and I don't really care about games that are like pre-pre-super-duper alpha. It, it basically doesn't mean anything at all, but if you want to, you can actually join the community and see how it's going there. Um, and I think it, it's, a, it's a game that has a dream that I want to see live up to its potential. I mean, the potential of uh, being a competitor to RuneScape, that would be amazing. And we've seen it before. There have been games that have competed, like World of Warcraft now competes with Final Fantasy 14 and EVE Online, debatably, actually, Albion Online is doing pretty great too. So, we will see. You know, there are some big titans in the industry for their genres, but I think Titan's Reach has a chance to you maybe not usurp RuneScape, but it could be same playing field. It could it could exist, maybe kind of. I mean, <laughs> Again, underdog MMO list, what can I say? We'll see where it goes from here, but it does seem like it's going to be probably at the, the same parody as one of those cuter kind of private MMO games, you know, like um, uh, Return of Reckoning for Warhammer or Toontown Rewritten. You know, those kind of games, those smaller MMOs, I think Titan's Reach can be that. I think that's realistic, and it's probably going to be a great fun time for people who enjoy those kind of more kept experiences. Number nine, I've got Core Punk. And it's lower because it's not so much an underdog. This game actually looks AAA in a lot of ways. It looks like, uh, I think it's it's got a really good head on its shoulders, so to speak. I think it's a good concept, a good idea. And let's go ahead and run that down. So basically, you can see it. It's an isometric game that seems somewhat inspired by action RPGs, sort of, but actually more inspired by maybe the older old school or maybe even now modern, which are also inspired by old school MMO. Anyways, isometric MMO is like Ultimate Online, pretty much. But Core Punk's obviously it's extra special too because it's got that sci-fi punkish look to it um also it's really unique it's kind of slower pace and it's also a bit more hardcore in some ways and there's also a lot of different systems that just make it kind of weird you know like the the way cosmetics work in the game the game um the gear is like it's like cosmetic like you just run it basically it's gonna be an easter egg hunt go around doing challenges and things like that living in a sandbox game um that happens to look like as you know isometric action rpg that um you know is a little bit slower pace it's it's about the grind and it's about working toward kind of like what you do in world of warcraft a little bit maybe like the transmog getting cool cosmetics guild wars and frankly a, you know actually a lot of action rpgs like that like warframe destiny a lot of it is like it, it becomes like fast fashion frame or whatever so 
Yeah, I totally get it. But Core Punk, um, we'll see how its itemization really works. I really hope they have fun items. I hope the classes have a lot of really gimmicky stuff that we do see in games like Diablo or especially Path of Exile. And I do hope we actually get to see that brought into an MMO space that's properly hardcore. Uh, so Albion Online is a competitor that I really appreciate and I didn't expect it to have the success that it does have now. So we'll see We'll see if Core Punk can actually compete with that game as well. So what do you guys think about Core Punk with its weird, slower paced, more methodical strategic gameplay or were you looking for something more like Lost Ark again that's why it's an underdog MMO it's not just big crazy spectacle action like Lost Ark or it's not quite as cartoon as something like Albion Online and it's not as slow paced or as mathematical as RuneScape where does Core Punk actually fit in I don't know but it looks like whatever they're trying to do they are definitely putting their best foot forward I can assure you of that Next up, we've got a really adorable pixel art game. I just recently actually did a video just kind of shouting it out, and that's Nika. So uh, I think, I hope I'm saying that correctly. But anyways, Nika is just, it, it's a really cute action RPG inspired MMO. Uh, cutesy, like cozy vibes, pixel art. You know, it, it's got anthropomorphic characters that you can play as, and all the mechanics are really kind of distilled versions of things that you would see in action RPGs. And it really reminds me a lot of some of the early like mobile MMOs that a lot of you guys probably play like Rukoi and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think I think it's pretty interesting. I, I really do want to see more games like this, and we are. We're seeing a wealth of them up and coming, but I think Nike is uh, the one to probably actually talk about. I think it's a proper underdog because it has a proper chance, and also at the same time, it's a game that probably you guys haven't heard of unless you watch my channel or a very select few others. So I really like pixel art games. I've actually talked about a few other pixel art MMOs. Actually, have I done a list video on just pixel art MMOs? Would you guys want that? Now, some of you guys might know Realm of the Mad God. That's like the one, but there's actually a bunch of others. Like you can consider Maple Story in that category now, and there's Starbreak and so many others. Uh, Nika Online is like the newest one that I'm uh, really, really excited about. Um, actually, it's it might yeah no I, I see the list now. Uh, action RPG inspiration is definitely something that we're seeing in AAA MMOs and in upcoming MMOs and even in the underdog ones. So yeah, if you guys like action RPG mechanics, yo know, Nika is um probably gonna be the game that isn't. It's not grim dark. It's cute. It's cozy, and it's maybe the game that. That's kind of fun for the whole family. So if you guys are looking for that, that's going to be this game. I also wanted to put another game on this list. However, it's defunct and rest in peace. Wreckful, actually, it was his game. So if you guys know what I'm talking about, you know, uh, I don't know, F in the chats, but much love to that MMO. Sometimes, and that's going to be the case for some of these games on this list too. They might not actually release, but we can hope for. I still think these are the ones that root for, and Nike is looking really cool. Okay, so next up we have Mad World. Um, this one is another hard action RPG inspired game, but like to the fullest. Like this is basically, it's Diablo with like a flash art style that you can play in browsers. Yeah, this is a browser MMO slash action RPG hybrid. And when I say that, I don't say it kind of like my peers would say like, oh, a four player game's an MMO because it's online. No, this is proper, like it has open areas, there's open dungeons. I actually did get to play this game, so you're probably going to see some of my gameplay sliced in here. Mad World is really like grotesque looking, and I really do like the smoothness of the animations. Let me know how you guys feel about the art style, but overall you can cl you can clearly tell. This is like, oh, this is Diablo if it was a browser MMO. Yeah, and there is some interesting actual mechanics, like there is skill shots, and you know, there's it's action based gameplay. You are going to have to dodge red circles like big giant siege boss fights that have really gimmicky mechanics so far that I've seen. Um, now, we will see how Mad World actually unravels because it seems like it's taking a long time to actually develop and uh, I don't know, there was like an arena game mode that I played, there was a seasonal event that I played, and then there was like this generic demo version that I played. So I don't know exactly if, like what the full world is going to look like with Mad World, if it's going to be very small areas um, and, and maybe that's going to be more kind of like, what was those games like, Davillion and the Moo Online? And there's been a couple of these especially Eastern, Asian, and uh, Korean action RPG slash MMOs. But I think Mad World is just kind of cool, especially with the gimmick that it's a mobile game that has its art style, and I want to see it work. I really want to see more and more games go back to being browser-based. I've played so many IO games that have been so freaking fun and ran so well, like Crunker.io. Freaking amazing, right? So if we could have games like that, uh, you know, like, RuneScape. You remember RuneScape that I mentioned already like five times in this video? RuneScape used to be a freaking browser game. How many of you started Started because it was browser. I miss browser MMOs. Mad World, let's keep the hype alive. 
Okay, so the next game is going to look very much like Path of Exile, very much maybe inspired by Diablo and stuff. Man, I'm gonna say that a lot through this video. But no, Fractured is maybe maybe more like, okay, we wanna make Ultima, but kinda make it newer, and I know we've heard that before. <laughs> there was a lot of games out there that I can continue to name drop, like Legends of Aria, etc. But um, no, Fractured, I think, just kind of, I don't know, there, there's some things that I really wanna call out. Um, now, if you look at their website, there's like a billion, million things where it's like, we're different, we do this and that, just like all these other MMO. But I think the one thing that I really want to call out is um, races seem to really matter in this game. In fact, I'm so inspired by how specific and unique races play in this game. I am going to play this game just for that one feature. Uh, as an example, you know like how like the Torn in World of Warcraft are supposed to be peace, like PC and kind of loving and stuff and like vegan and I don't know, they're not really vegan, but whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, but there's basically you play the same as any other character in the game. In this game, it's like if you pick demons, you have open PvP. You actually have a total totally different way of playing the game. And if you play as humans or if you play as another race, then you have more of an RP experience or more of a PVE experience. Like you don't fight with your faction or whatever. So, I mean, that's just a quick, you know, oversimplification of the system, but that hypes me up. You know, it's it's kind of like, you know, in World of Warcraft, when you pick Horde, you're probably a PvP player. Well, what if what if players did that? Like, what if you're a demon, you're literally, okay, we, you can free-for-all with all the other demons, you can, um, you know, there's loot, full loot and stuff like that. Or if you want to play a little bit more passively, you choose that different race. You literally have a different culture, because that that's how MMOs are. You do have player cultures. Let's, you know, show examples of that. Anyways, uh, that's just something I geek out about. It's a sandbox. They promote, like, oh, crafting and merchants and blah, blah, blah. Another thing that's actually kind of interesting because they can do this with the ARPG inspiration mechanics is um, they call it action combat evolved and there's just going to be a lot of intermeaning I guess mingling I want to say mingling and twining of abilities stuff like you're going to be doing really impactful environmental stuff like freezing rivers I guess or maybe possibly someone will create a firewall and you'll be able to kind of snuff it out or shoot through it and it creates combo fields something kind of that's sort of done in Guild Wars 2 but maybe brought to a new stage with this game then again the game might just be on a macro level kind of exciting and just say all these things just like any on this list oh we're gonna do this and do that we don't know how it's really gonna come out but simple fact you know they have some kind of dramatic ideas even though yes it does kind of look like a lot of games on this list and games that we have played before you know it's like why play this when I already play Albion I don't know but you get to play as a, a demon and that's pretty neat this this seems like a grown-up MMO for grown-ups and I think a lot of people are hungry for that yeah you know if you happen to be a grown-up Another sandbox MMO, Profane. Yeah, it's also another train. Basically, it's like action RPG inspiration and sandbox. And I think a lot of people really want that because it's very opposite to World of Warcraft. Supposedly, even though World of Warcraft's new direction is actually ARPG inspired. But regardless, ARPG and sandbox, Profane. Here we go. Okay, it's a true sandbox MMO, which pretty much all of them always self-proclaim that. But it's supposed to be player driven. Again, another thing that they all claim. But I think this one, actually more so than others, kind of actually, you can literally really see the mechanics of that. So on their website, they talk about how it's going to be skill based combat systems. Cool. Nice. Thumbs up. I guess, you know, I want to have skillful gameplay combat. Uh, it's going to be no classes or levels. It's all about, you know, actually like going around the world, getting your abilities, stuff like that. And um, just trying to be the best that you can without arbitrary stat values, which is pretty cool. Again, a lot of games say stuff like that, like Albion, and yet they're totally our classes, totally our levels. They're just called different things. We'll see. But the game is what makes it really special is going to be the control control, claim lands, you're gonna be able to set laws, collect taxes, you're actually gonna to have to um, keep away invaders, it's gonna be like that. So this is gonna be kind of reminiscent if you play maybe survival games, and in a lot of ways if you look at gameplay, this looks like a survival game, but really kind of being built from the ground up to be like an MMO, you know, like like Conan was more survival, but it really bridged the gap of like, could this be an MMORPG? Hmm, you know, there's some servers on Rust and Minecraft that do bridge the gap of MMO-dom, but I think Profanes from the ground up is like, all right, we like these survival survival mechanics. We also like sandbox MMOs. Let's put them together. And there's been a few games that have attempted that, such as Last Oasis, which just came out this year, and then Dead on Arrival, but was still kind of neat. We're seeing games trying this and trying this, but I think this art style, this cutesiness to it could actually be really good. Um, overall, I think it's just going to be kind of more of a cute game, and I think it's going to be a game that a lot of people are going to want to play that um, maybe are getting burnt by games like Crowfall and a few other, like, yeah, oh man, there was like a game called Rend, and actually now that I think about it, there's a lot of games that kind of have this vibe and, and concept, so seeing all of those completely die on arrival or die before they even release, 
definitely makes this game an underdog, but it's kind of my thing that I really like hyping up. So I want to play more games like this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's try to let's try to sugarcoat profane a little bit, at least until we see it suck or never come out. But just to kind of bull true through some uh, unique mechanics of this that might separate it from other games is the game is supposed to be kind of inspired by like the randomness of maybe like other action RPGs where it's like you do have monsters that do actually have varying mutators or varying like strength levels and, and you know, different stuff like that. Um, or they're just in totally different places. There is a level of randomness. Maybe you might have seen in like roguelites for that as well. So yeah, definitely maybe more like survival games again, where it's like, okay, there's a lot of randomness. Things, you're not just going to run through a dungeon, do the usual quest, and then you repeat it the next week because it's like a raid or whatever. No, it's it's going to be something more that you live in and breathe in. And maybe sometimes there's going to be like some rare elite monster. And it's like, oh shit, yo guys, we need help here. And you got to ping everyone where it is. Everyone has to fight for it. Stuff like that. It could be really cool. Though again, there are other games that um, maybe be trying to do stuff like that sort of or just the overall concept like new world is a game that kind of seems similar but for some reason i just i don't know i think i gravitate to this art style a little bit more and i think that this game especially because it's a smaller studio it's allowed to be a little bit more experimental so you know how random can it be how more like survivally inspired could it be versus like god man new you know like new world going more like it's kind of a standard mmo now we definitely have a space for survival mmos let's do it oh and if i wasn't quite clear how it's kind of similar to New World. It's actually like the whole base building thing and, and building up an empire and kind of defending it from sieges and stuff like that. Uh, you know, conquering villages. That That's like, yeah, that was what New World was going to be trying to be. Actually, Profane is kind of the original concept of New World. So we'll see what's better. Uh, the new vision of New World or now this new funky, uh, which was the OG vi vision. Yeah, longer video, but I got a lot to say, and hopefully that's cool. But the next up here, big four, we got Starbase. This is a game that I always just like get the biggest smile on my face, and then my face hurts after talking about it because the smile doesn't go away. Starbase is um, basically, it's sci-fi, it's a first person shooter, it's voxel destruction and creation with like kind of true engineering built into it. Like you actually have to piece together your spaceships and even piece together how you control them. And then all like throw that all together in space with robots. Um, it's like the most unique MMO ever. And so this is definitely, to me, I don't think it's going to usurp, I think, Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2 is always going to have that cheese and that sort of boots on the ground feel, despite it being like in space sci fi. But Starbase is just so freaking radical. There's no way I could not talk about it ever. But I pretty much just laid it out right there. Um, I, I don't even know how to describe this game uh, in terms, maybe there's like some survival games that kind of do these mechanics. If you ever played, maybe like Scrap Mechanic. Yeah, Scrap Mechanic, you know, where you actually like wire things and have certain buttons that do certain things that you have to actually you know organize and press anyways there's gonna be that also like when your ships get destroyed and stuff you're gonna have to actually you know piecemeal it together in a lot of ways uh, there kind of was an MMO that was sort of like this with grappling hooks and like airships where you actually had to build everything together and balance it out yeah oh, but that's defunct so who cares I'm tired of name dropping but anyways um there's been very few games oh last Oasis kind of has you know kind of a vibe to this where that you know it's trying to be like an action sandbox game where you build bases and siege bases but this is in space with actual giant space colonies space different varying levels of spaceships you know it's got guns shotguns and dude, the fuck the fuck voxel voxel voxels a lot of voxels guys voxel destruction to the point where like you could pop off you know like you could blow up like the, the like the lock or maybe a part of the wall and then shoot through the wall all of this you know i just recently played like a first person shooter call of duty clone kind of game that does this dude this mmo looks like it's going to be exponentially even better than that and and be an mmo and have you know vehicle combat and stuff like that i don't know man like how how is this game actually going to work how is it going to run i can't i can't imagine it but then again the first time i ever played planet side 2 i didn't think it was possible the mad lads did it so I'm gonna you know this is the underdog game because what the fuck how is it gonna do this I don't know but Starbase whether it's a giant success or not Either way, they're trying to do something new. They're going into a new frontier that I definitely want to see more MMOs go into, which is just less copy-paste. Obviously, do unique designs, unique concepts, and unique aesthetics, but also really pushing the technological boundaries. Back in the day, World of Warcraft was huge for, you know, the things that it did. Let's go a little bit deeper. Planetside 2 also, I think, is, is really cool, but since then, we just haven't really pushed the boundaries. Starbase, whoo, sky's the limit. Or maybe, I don't, I don't know, space, space pun? Should have said space. Fuck. Anyway, Starbase, keep the hype alive. 
Okay, we got another, <laughs> uh, we got another survival game, which is gonna look pretty similar to many others that I've mentioned, actually. Uh, either survival games in previous list videos or proper MMOs, or, you know, just MMO survival games. So Frozen Flame, it is an early access game that's planned to release this year, but it's like this year's almost over, so we'll, you know, whatever. Uh, Frozen Flame, multiplayer survival action RPG is how they technically claim it. However, depending on the player count, and they actually do want to promote a more MMO scale, where it's like, you know, actual guild-based gameplay, clan-based gameplay. There's actually like questing and true RPG mechanics, permutation with the permanence of base building and leveling characters, things like that. Basically, in most ways, it seems like it's going to be an MMO, um, but I think they're being gentle with themselves by not calling it an MMO because it, it doesn't look like World of Warcraft exactly, even though it looks like there's gonna... There is raids, there are raids, it is large player content, and it is also something that it's about you know, fighting, not just even as a guild, but as a whole server, in order to save the world. That's the big gimmick here. Okay, so, uh, Pyromancy, I guess, is the main magic or whatever system. It's gonna be Pyromancy as magic. Uh, it's gonna be mostly melee and ranged combat, a lot of physical stuff. Again, this does look very similar to Profane or Rend or a lot of other kind of failed games, but Frozen Flame could be really cool because of this gimmick, which, again, is something that those games did also try, and we are seeing more and more games do, especially Viking-inspired. There's a lot of Viking and Nordic-inspired games, but it's this, it's the idea of Ragnarok. It's the idea of an apocalypse. It's the idea uh, that the server will actually be destroyed and deleted. Uh, Population Zero, also a recent sci-fi MMO, also attempted that concept. But here's, here it is. So basically, you have a set amount of time, maybe a month or so, where you, as a, and as a, a guild or as a person, as an entire clan uh, server, you are trying to basically build up your, your worth, your strength, in order to defeat giant bosses, giant monsters, and eventually a world boss, so that the server won't be deleted and destroyed. Regardless, you're going to go through multiple cycles, the server will be destroyed, but your progress does carry over. So even though you have to rebuild bases and you have to maybe rebuild certain things and redo certain things, for uh, actually that repetition is really fun for people who play survival games. But in MMOs, it's really cool that there's that semi-permanence and permutation so that you can continue to get stronger with your guild, kind of just basically have a speedrun mentality of, okay, here we go, we're going to esport this shit, we're going to get better, stronger, faster, harder, baby, and then we're going to beat this final boss so that we can basically win the MMO. Again, another game, god, I said I would stop name dropping, but Crowfall also has the, the concept of winning an MMO. I definitely want that way more in my MMOs. Frozen Flame, even if you don't get to a true MMO scale, regardless, I gotta shout you out because holy fuck, that is way too cool, at least for my personal preference. What do you guys think in the comments below? Yeah, guys. Uh, next up, we have Ember Sword. Ember Sword's pretty cute. You know, I can't really fault it for anything uh, when it comes to the art style myself, personally. I really like this look. This is how I want mobile MMOs to look. Though, uh, I don't think is Ember Sword even mobile? I actually don't. I don't think it is. Anyways, uh, it's a blockchain MMO, so that's a big gimmick. I, I'm honestly, I'm not even going to get into that. But basically, blockchain is like some blah 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 uh, new system that every, you know, it's like a new gimmick that everyone talks about, and it's supposed to be a way so that you can kind of own, you know, you have your own identifier, kind of like Bitcoin. It's like you you have you own your own digital content. Um, now they say a bunch of stuff. It is going to be a free to play MMO. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, now it's going to be a PvP and PVE game. Nice as well, but I think the big gimmick is okay. It's an action RPG inspired sandboxy MMO. Yeah, yeah, I get it. We talked, we talked about it a lot, but it's got the sort of like the mobile game looking aesthetic. But that's really that really worked out with Albion Online. And I know we don't have too much footage, too much to talk about. And I really don't like reciting things that people just kind of say. You guys can tell I'm I'm pretty pessimistic, right? For someone who's trying to hype up games, I'm still you know I'm pretty critical. But I, I gotta say that um, I'm really looking forward to base basically an Albion 2.0. Possibly, you know, I, there's, there's more to it than that, um, but you no, know, yeah, that's that's kind of what I want. I want an Albion 2.0 that maybe has a little bit more focus on a PvE element. I think a cuter game like this is gonna, you know, I think a lot of people would want to play more of a PvE focused game. That it happens to have PvP, so I think a PvE kind of cuter, you know, maybe more Care Bear style Albion Online is, is probably the quickest and simplest way to sum it up. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna poop that out. It's got a little bit of sci-fi fantasy thrown in there, um, so it's kind of cool. I I don't know. <laughs> I think I think the character design is kind of wonky in some ways, but I like. I mean, I like it. You know, I, okay. I, I just I just already know the comments are gonna be like, oh, this looks like crap. So whatever. Uh, Plato the MMO, sure, whatever. Um, but I me, mean, I like games like Albion. I like games like Wakfu, even RuneScape. I think there's some charm to that art style. So this game just looks like an evolution of that. 
you know, fight me, okay? And the last game to actually talk about here for Underdog MO is going to be Defend the Night. And if I was also, just by the way, a little bit lighter on my description of a lot of these games, it's because it's a top 10. You know, go look at the website yourself, guys. I'm just going to give you the general gist of why I'm talking about it for the, you know, the reason I'm making the video. But Defend the Night, actually, their developer uh, is a Patreon supporter, I guess. I see the red name on my Discord. Um, they often, or, or maybe it's like a community manager or something, but they often actually do post on um, our Discord. And not the only only MMO to do that or only game to do that. I just think it's really cool that um, when MMOs develop with like content creators in mind, um, with like their community in mind, they join community discords and like, hey, you guys like MMOs, here's my MMO, what do you guys think? And it's really cool when they ask for feedback and they receive feedback and they're just very receptive to stuff like that. I think that's cool. A lot of AAA games will be like, oh yeah, we have forums and like we're totally listening to you. And then like they really not. I think being built from the ground up, you know, Kickstarter or otherwise, and just being that ingrained in like YouTube comments, like you you literally can see the developers, they'll sometimes post on YouTube comments. I love that. So Defend the Night's one of those games, and I think Defend the Night is, it's one of those games that's kind of retro inspired. I believe I put it in a few lists actually, but namely, um, there's a bunch of games out there that some people are kind of overhyping. I honestly, for this slot, I was just going to say all retro inspired MMOs are kind of underdog MMOs because they're not anime. They're not, you know, like a WoW clone or whatever. But honestly, a lot of them are getting kind of overhyped, um, you know, like Pantheon, stuff like that. I really think that those games, they should be underdogs, but they're not. But the Defend the Night is actually one of them that's kind of newer. It's really fresh, um, which is probably why it's an underdog. But I think as it has more footage and more gameplay, it's going to be more excited. But um, no, yeah, I think I think Defend the Night is going to be something that um, could be really fun. Ju just just kind of based on the fact that I kind of like the way it looks graphically, you know, pretty much that. And it doesn't seem like it's going to have too radical of a design philosophy. Again, very similar to a lot of other retro MMOs. But that's ah, man, I just really want to go on a rant about that. But that's kind of what we want, isn't it? That's why there's an entire swath, a whole new genre of retro inspired MMOs, because it's like, yeah, we don't want anything totally radically different. We kind of want a new Ultima. We kind of want a new EverQuest. We want a new RuneScape. And that's what this is. So this game's pulling from a couple of different inspirations. But for the most part, I think you can kind of look at it and be like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, this is. Uh, but at the, oh, oh, yeah, that's a big thing. This does look like a retro inspired MMO, but graphically, even though there's some clunk, obviously, because it's new, I think that it doesn't look as bad as the vast majority of the others, um, where a lot of them really look old and dated. You know, it looks like they didn't take design you know, decisions that were, they were kind of newer, like with newer World of Warcraft or Guild Wars or something like that. It looks like they didn't, you know, take that inspiration and they just kind of made a new EverQuest, like the old clunky UI. Ew. But no, this game actually is like, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think they're, they're kind of a little bit more forward thinking. I don't know. That's just, that's just something random to talk about. But, um, yeah, I like their selection of classes, you know, like they got Druid. Cool. Battle Mage. Neat. Paladin. You know, it's kind of usual stuff. Shadow Knight. Yeah, no, I love Death Knights, Dark Knights, absolutely. So, you know, it's just the usual stuff, nothing too ridiculous, nothing too anime, but at the same time, that's kind of why it's an underdog, is because at face value, it doesn't look that hype, I think. Um, you know, a lot of anime games come out and really, it's just fluff and, and just kind of garbage, but this might be something that's a little bit more reasonable and something that's easier to be understood, I think, for especially older gamers and people who are nostalgic. And basically, we just want another good MMO. Take, let's go back to the era of the emergence of MMOs and all the epicosity that used to come down with that, you know, like Ashron's, right, Ultima, obviously, and, you know, EverQuest, stuff like that, and let's make games like that, so Defend the Night is taking the spot here of what I was going to call the entire genre, retro MMO, no, let me just be fair and pick one that's actually not overhyped, is an underdog, and has a reasonable chance of success, that's Defend the Night. Sorry, I was very vague about it, but the game is very, very new. So we'll see what time, just like all these other MMOs, they are upcoming MMOs, disclaimer, but I don't know. That's one I'm just, just I'm gonna shout out. Yeah, I know some of my reasonings for some of the things on this list uh, was just kind of random. I get it. You know, it's vague. I'm just I'm just saying stuff. It's a list video. Who really cares? But then it's an upcoming video, okay, guys? That's anyways. Um, I just wanted to say stuff and things. I wanted to just basically create a spotlight for some games that you didn't know about because honestly, I do a lot of list videos. I do a lot of reviews, but you guys are just begging, 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 chasing the dragon. What's new? I want to try something new. Well, here it is. These are the best chances at finding something new. And some of them, 
I definitely, you know, reference and, and have revealed themselves to be uh, similar to some older games. Um, but then again, sometimes that new fresh take or just being able to play this kind of experience now um, is really special because you, I don't think you can go back and play Ultima. I don't think you can go back and have the experience in EverQuest or a lot of just like alter, you know, like private MMOs um, that have kind of resurged. It, you know, it's not the same. So having a brand new MMO, brand new world to explore with some, you know, slight twists and turns is pretty cool. And then some of these games on this list are just radically different. So I think it's a good mix for a lot of different people. Let me know which one is going to be the one that you're rooting for in the comments below. But this was my list of upcoming new underdog MMOs to root for. Keeping the hype alive, my name's Skylant, and I'll see you again next time if you happen to subscribe. Alright, much love. See you in the next one.